she confessed. <laughs> now for the birds and the bees invention. Male contraception, tricky. There's a vasectomy, but what else? Okay, imagine if you had a remote control. You press the button, you're fertile. Press it again, you're not. Wow. Just make sure the kids don't get hold of it. <laughs> There comes a time in many couples' lives where they don't really want to have any more children. But the male parent is often not too keen on having the snip. With a vasectomy, there's the surgery, the pain, and the fear that it might not be reversible. Our wireless microvalve provides an alternative, smaller than half a grain of rice. The minute valve sits inside the vas deferens, or sperm tube. The valve can be closed to stop sperm leaving the body. There's no surgery as it can easily be inserted by a doctor using a hypodermic needle. And best of all, it's remote controlled, so your doctor can open and close the valve with a device similar to a car key remote. So if you change your mind, you can open the microvalve just like opening a roller door. Please welcome from Adelaide, Professor Derek Abbott. <laughs> Great, Derek. Thank you. And this is so clever. This is, well, the tube, the relevant tube is, is there and we've sort of blown it up and basically let's shut the, let's shut the, uh, the garage door. There we go. It's shut, so that will not let any sperm through. That's right. But it'll still let seminal fluid through. Yes. But then, and then when you change your mind, oh, no, I feel a bit fertile tonight. No, I don't <laughs> want to be fertile anymore. Change your mind, open it up like that. And, um, I mean, your mate down the road, his wouldn't accidentally change yours, <laughs> would it? They're all individual, right? That's right. Yeah. So the way it's set up is we've got it to respond only to a coded radio signal. Yes. So in the same way that that would unlock your car door, yes. for example, and not another car, this, will, this is designed to be the same. You recommend you keep this with your doctor, but I reckon it'd be kind of fun leaving it lying around home, but that's probably <laughs> irresponsible, right? Yeah, well, accidents could happen. I think it'd yeah. be a lot... No, it's fine, honey. <laughs> a lot safer locked in the doctor's surgery. Yes, right. Um, well, look, come across to the panel. I'm going to leave that remote uh, there so no one can touch it. Um, I think there'd be a huge demand for this because you're not... Burning any bridges, are you? That's right. In, a, in fact, one of your cameramen just a moment ago <laughs> said he wanted one. Um, so uh, I've got a customer right away. You've got away. a customer. Yes. And now he's blushing too, I was in <laughs> But do you think it require a little operation to get it in there? Um, that's the beauty of it. Uh, we don't require a scalpel as such. Um, we believe it will be able to be inserted hypodermically. Maybe just with a blindfold rather than yeah. anaesthetic. Yeah. Is it like right, so you could do it without a general anaesthetic? Uh, oh, you'd need a local. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But not a bigger deal, is it? But it won't it? be a big deal. Yeah. Goodness. Well, Mark, you're really the one who I should go to first yeah. on this, I think. And I certainly hope they're using a local. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Derek. So, the thing you've really invented here is this polymer that can open and close, this piezopolymer that opens and closes when you give it a really, really high frequency radio wave burst. How long is that going to last once it's inside my body? We've not considered the idea of opening and closing it many times because the way we see it is it's going to be marketed to guys who already want a vasectomy anyway. Mm -hmm. So they've come to the end where they've decided they don't want any more children and they want a vasectomy, but hey, this could be an alternative. Right. What you've really got here is a general purpose valve that I can open and close. So have you given thought now to being able to perhaps use that as a, the opening to a reservoir that might have maybe uh, anti-cancer drug in it or insulin or some other thing? Yes, that's another possible application for this sort of valve and what you're talking about is called drug delivery. And so for diabetics, mm. they sometimes have a, an implant that slowly drips out uh, insulin into them over a period of time. And this valve uh, could help to control that uh, flow. Derek, how reliable is this as a contraceptive? The danger is actually in the reverse direction. We've designed it in a way so that if, if, if it fails in a closed, uh, in a closed mode. So 
if there's a failure, it's going to be that you're not going to be fertile oh, okay. again. Yeah. So that's right. why I, I recommend it's for people who already want a vasectomy mm -hmm. anyway. Have you done any clinical trials, Derek? Well, the next stage is uh, animal trials first. So we have to trial it in sheep for at least five years before it will be allowed to go near a human. Mm. How are the sheep going to feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great garage door. Please thank Professor Derek Abbott. Thank you very much. Now, before we go tonight, I want to ask each of our panellists to have a little bit of a think about how they'd like to see technology used to reinvent the body in the future. I've got a couple. Um, firstly, volume for ears. Because, uh, you know, when you, there's a leaf blower or something and you can't... Or a lawnmower next door, wouldn't it be good just to turn it down a bit so you couldn't change hear. Change the microvalve. Imagine having microvalves in your air canals and you just put your little yeah, control exactly. up there and it turns it down. And the other one is the self-removing appendix. You know how the <laughs> appendix is useless? People have to go to hospital for two weeks, say, you know, have a big operation. Wouldn't it be good if when you got appendicitis, when you had to have it removed, instead of that, it just mm. made you go to the bathroom and vomit. And out it came. <laughs> no, no hospital, no I nothing. I think we need that model of the body back for a minute yeah, just to right. explain Yeah, something. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I think no, that'll just work. Just the appendix. <laughs> what, what do you think? Oh, it's a no-brainer for me, James, because my mum's in a wheelchair, so I would love for her to be able to have a new spine grown and be able to walk again, or at least stand mm. on her feet. Yeah, right. So stem cell scratch. research. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So all that stuff that stem cell research is promising. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Yeah. For me, we think a lot about improvements to our body, to our, to our eyes and that sort of thing, but one of the most debilitating conditions is a mental health problem. And mm. I mean, if, you, if you're like me and suffer from depression or if you're bipolar or um, you know, any of that sort of stuff, it really can wreck your life. And what I'd love to see is something that can get, you know, basically it just means your brain's gone <coughs> somewhere along your life. And if you could get something in that would sort of defrag your brain like a computer and just mm. reset yeah. it a bit. I wonder, yeah. I think that one of the areas we're already going and we'll need to go more is to actually develop senses for things that we can't normally experience. So if we could have the echolocation abilities of a bat. So in other words, bats emit very high frequency pulses okay. and they listen to them bounce back so that bats can be blind as a bat and yet still fly around and capture tiny little insects in the air all the right. time. Imagine if you're working in a cave or another dark environment, you'd have everything you needed or if you could see radio waves or if you could see ultraviolet light and you'd know whether you have to put on more yeah. sunscreen. Can I have one more? Yeah. You know when you vomit your appendix out, <laughs> you've, got, you've got a space left where it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. You know when you go to a three hour movie and halfway through you have to go to the toilet <laughs> and you miss the vital bit. So oh. a little pouch within you where when you need to you can internally allow yourself to go to the toilet into that pouch and then when the movie's finished you go and enter it, you go and empty Just it out. Okay, I'm it. changing my vote. That gets it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, look, please thank our panellists tonight. Thank you, guys. And if you want to know more, there's a web forum straight after the show with Bernie Hobbs and a host of experts. Just log on to abc.net.au slash newinventors and you can ask them anything you want about the future of the body. Finally, the quote from American author Jim Rohn. He said, take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. Good night. <laughs> We know that last week the panel picked Peter Wright and his rhino. But what did you pick as the people's choice? There was the animal recognition technology, the water cell and the rhino. And you picked the water cell. For more ABC TV vodcasts, go to the website abc.net.au forward slash tv forward slash